So uh, yesterday, I showed y'all, talked uh, uh, biochar, and I had told you that once she gets burning, I'll show it to you. And I lit this one off, oh, half hour ago, and uh, we had 60 degrees here today. Today's the 27th of February. So, um, so then I don't have snow on the ground. So some of my animals, pigs, especially, I got to get water to them. And usually in February, the water still froze, but I tried it and it, it did go to some of my pens, but some of them were frozen. So I had to work that a little bit, but here we are. This is half an hour into the burn. And what you're seeing here is the gas that's being released from the wood and bone and other things that I put in there today is it's gassing off, all right? So it's not, ex it's not exposed to the flame. It's in that barrel. And so it's just being sort of like baked or roasted. No, no, roasted wouldn't be a good thing. It's, uh, yeah, I guess roasted. If you roast something, you put it in a, I don't know. No, I'm not sure that that is true. Do you roast something over a fire? So that wouldn't be correct. But anyway, it's the, the wood stock is inside that barrel and the barrel's upside down. So there's no flame hitting that feedstock at this point it's just being roasted and what it does is it releases the gas um it, it releases the elements in the wood let's see this is a good way to put it anything that's in the wood or the bone that is not carbon is released and when it's released it seeps out from under the barrel, it's under pressure, and then it contacts the flame and then it burns. So this is burning real hot right now. Like I'm pretty, I'm, it's pretty warm right here. You can see at the bottom of there, it's cherry red. And as this continues, the top turns quite red too. So that's up there, that's a couple thousand degrees. And at night, uh, you will actually see a really nice spout of flame coming off there. I'm not sure if we've passed it or not. I just looked over from what I was doing and I saw this going, so I thought I'd share it with you. But I, uh, I had a real good burn from yesterday. I opened it up and all that bone had gassed off and we got some really nice char out of it. It might be a little dark to show it to you. Uh, it's coming through pretty good, but here's here's a piece of hip bone and it's completely just carbon now it's just carbon and so the next step for this is I'll put it through this hammer mill and uh, then we get a nice looking product that looks kind of like kind of like this See if I can open this Ziploc with one hand. Uh, hand in a mouth. Hand in a tooth. And once it is ground, we will inoculate it before we grind it. And then it comes out looking like this. And this can go in whatever you're going to, however you're going to apply it, you can apply it like this. Now, if it's in big chunks like this, like here's a piece of pelvis as well, um, you can just crush it up, step on it, roll over it, do it however you want to crush it and, and get it out like that. Uh, a lot of the wood that we loaded it with was pretty thin staves from uh from pallets i get it from a, a shop where they make pallets and then i cut it up a little bit so it, a lot of it fits in you want to get as much into the barrel as you possibly can 
so you can get as, as much, you know, it's the, a better burn and you get more out of it. Now, this video is like a show and tell, but I'm not actually showing the secret sauce here of everything that's inside of it. There's a little bit more to it uh, to make it work effectively every single time. And those videos, uh, the how-to, the nitty-gritty how-to, to get to those videos, you go to bakersgreenacres.com and get into what's called Tribe Plus. And that's where I take a lot more time, long videos, to show exactly how I do stuff. You know, there's not enough time on these videos. This is just a Facebook video. This this will get you, like, kind of interested. If you're interested in biochar, if you're interested in anything homesteading, any of the tips and tricks, and what we would call force multipliers, uh, biochar is definitely one of them. If you can master biochar, you can really get a boost in your fertility all about your farm. And you can do it relatively quickly, too. There's a lot to know about biochar. There's a lot of information, I suppose, on the Internet about biochar. I don't need any more convincing. Uh, I'll tell you what, this tank is a quarter-inch thick tank. And uh, it had to be cut and welded. Uh, this was made for something else. That's what all that apparatus on the top is. And this thing hanging off the back is nothing more than a counterweight because that top is so heavy. But there we go. We're getting a nice flame off the top. It's impressive in the dark. Really impressive in the dark. Right now, I it's, it's chilly and I'm plenty warm standing right here. So we're releasing a lot of energy to make biochar and then the question is well couldn't you use that energy for other things and I certainly could I certainly could a burn like this I would say if you heated water with it you could have a, a reservoir of water that's extremely uh, extremely warm you know it, it would probably boil but if you accumulated it someplace you put it in some sort of big tank especially an underground tank I think you could store a lot of hot water and then you could draw off that hot water for your home or your greenhouse or your you know whatever buildings you want to heat and that's pretty much what they do with the outdoor boilers but they don't have a tremendous amount of of storage capacity what they do is they'll they'll damp down the fire right and that way you don't wind up having to kindle a fire every day when you do this. But that is just cool. I love doing this. Uh, because we're getting on towards spring, I'm comp I was completely out. We fed, fed or sold everything that we had. Uh, I decided that it would be a good thing to make a bunch more. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn every day until I run out of feed stock. And I'm getting there. I have all of this stuff over here and that big bone pile and I'm finding more bones as we go because my associates here the the four-legged ones they select the ones that they want to bring up to the house and uh, I find some of them at you know in shallow they, they like to bury them for me and I usually find them when I run over them but that's looking good that's looking really good now one of the things about this that I go into a little bit more in the tribe videos the tribe plus videos is this design is the design i would stay with me personally because once this is lit i can i can walk away from it i don't have to tend it i mean i have to be a little careful because it's open flame you know and there's dry grass and stuff but i put this in a place where I'm less likely to have any kind of problems from it. I wouldn't want it near a building, you know, especially when it's windy out. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going in the house here pretty quick. I got things to do. And uh, actually, we have the show tonight, the uh, Anyone Can Farm live chat. And we're going to be talking about some very interesting things, but I don't know what they are yet. 
<laughs> I haven't got the word yet. Usually I come up with something that I want to talk about, but today was one of those days where I just nothing really came. So I'm kind of waiting. Got probably an hour or so. Is it seven o'clock yet? I don't know what time it is. But I thought that would be kind of neat. Beautiful day. You live for these days. I do. Um, normally in February, it wouldn't be real fun to be out here. And I usually don't do this in February because it's just so unpleasant to be outside. You know, I, I do what I have to do, take care of the animals, see to their needs. But when it's nice like this, you start, I'm, I'm starting to gear up for spring. I'm really getting excited about spring coming and all the things that I want to do. Um, spending time around here today, I could see some things that I want to change, you know, a couple fences that I want to move to someplace else so it'll open up some more ground. And uh, I really would like to have an orchard on the farm. I got a little start on it here. I've got six apple trees here, but I want to take this all the way down and around and sort of make a grove that you can walk down through. And uh, it's close enough to the pigs. So when we have drops coming off the trees, <clears throat> you know, it can be just thrown in to the, to the pigs. It's kind of a nice, nice deal. Uh, at one point I thought I could put trees in with the pigs and then the drops would fall down. They could get them, but it, I tried it. Didn't work. It's just a little too fertile in with them and the trees just didn't, didn't make it. All right. So I can walk away from this because as soon as the feedstock in the inner barrel has completely gassed off, it just shuts down. And then tomorrow when I come out, it'll be, the whole thing will be cold. It will be cold. Uh, so this will probably finish up, I don't know, in a few hours. And then it'll just sit there and, and smolder a little bit for a while. Boy, now it's really coming. Pretty cool. Yeah, the uh, the live chat tonight is going to be 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you go to the Anyone Can Farm Experience on YouTube, that's where we meet. It's not like we ever sit there and stare at each other. There's always things to talk about in, in homesteading. And this time of the year is when you, you say, oh, I know why I do this. Now I know why I do this. I really like this time of the evening because everything slows down. The animals are going and laying down. They've eaten all they're going to do, and they're getting ready to just snooze the night. So everything's quiet. I know that they're all fed. Now I'm going to get fed and then go to bed. Oh, there's the bell. All right, got to go. Remember, anyone can farm.